Hey everyone, how are you doing today? Hope you guys are excited as I am because today we are starting our new series. So we're going to show you how we took our old tank from this all the way to this beautiful Aquascape masterpiece. So if you guys aren't subscribed, I suggest doing that right now, hitting that little bell, so that'll give you notifications for our video. Hope you really enjoy this series. Hey everyone, how are you? You have Mike and Kevin here from Northern Ontario Claire and Hobby. And today we are going to do a makeover of this 35 gallon tank and we're going to plant it and uh, hopefully have a new home for our pea puffers. So I'm going to let Kevin take it a little bit from here and he's going to explain what we're going to do today with this tank. Okay. Hello aficionados. I have to throw that in there because uh, he is my cat. Uh, anyways, Mike called me over because we wanted to do a little bit something with uh, his planted tank here. Uh, brought a couple trimmings over uh, just to at least get him started. Uh, we're going to cover a few of the things that we do in uh, some of my videos, and uh, you're going to get to see them in actual application here. Talking about the design for the blue of thirds, uh, a little bit of planting techniques, uh, how to use uh, some things that I haven't actually covered in some of my videos, uh, like the way to glue mosses and everything. So you're going to get a little bit of an exclusive here before uh, I do some videos on my channel. But uh, there we go. So hopefully you'll be able to learn a little something. Uh, we did just a really rough sort of uh, uh, layout attempt here uh, to just sort of get our ideas, which I highly recommend when you're dealing with your hardscape pieces when you've got some large uh, bits. Uh, we've got a nice large piece of uh, root wood here that Mike had, as well as another longer piece of uh, some spider root uh, and some lava rock. Now, obviously, when you are uh, designing your tank, you're not going to typically be wanting to work with just a flat base, but it's a good idea to at least put your hardscape stuff in first and sort of lay it out to get your general ideas of where you want it to be. Now, uh, give me two seconds here. But I've got my uh, handy dandy dry erase marker again, because uh, I find it's helpful uh, when you're first starting out working your design in defining your rule of thirds. Now, rule of thirds, uh, uh, I explained a bit in depth in another video that we can uh, link that to. Link link here, yeah. Uh, but basically, it's just a way of laying out a grid so that you can highlight your points of interest, and points of interest are better when they are placed in areas of the thirds. So just roughly marking it out with my, with my eye, sort of dividing the tank thusly, and so we have uh, just at least a basic layout of here are the thirds of the tank. So typically, if you design towards a third section and put your highlights there, it allows a lot more balance for positive and negative flow. Uh, again, we can sort of chop it up this way to give us a little bit uh, of a better idea of where potential focal points can be. Uh, not interseas, <laughs> as if you're laughing from the video, not interseas but intersecting points that we can uh, that we can cover here. So uh, we're going to sort of dive right in and pull all this stuff out and we're going to start with our substrate layer. Um, in this case, uh, Mike has got some fluorite. Uh, it's, again, it's uh, inert, but it does have a good uh, quality of CEC. This is something, again, that you could look at in my uh, Understanding Planted Substrates video. Uh, we'll explain all those sort of concepts, but basically CEC uh, allows the stone to hold on to nutrients later for uh, uptake. There's better substrates you can use, there's lesser substrates you can use. It'll all work. This is what we're going to work with because the coloration is going to work really nice with that lava rock. So first thing we're going to do is start working with the, the fluorite. Awesome. So let's get into it. So as I said, we're going to start off with uh, the fluorite here. Uh, now, just as a, as a basic start, you, you want to be dumping it in, at least to get your base. Uh, as we progress, we're going to be banking that substrate up to the back a little bit more. Um, reason for that is, one, it creates a sense of depth, but it also allows some of your stem plants, which require a little bit more substrate, to have uh, some more depth to go in. But we're going to be laying our base layer down right now, and then putting in our main hardscape uh, items just so that it has something to sit on and then we can start building up our substrate behind. That way you've got 
your hardscape it sort of creates a, like a bit of a dam or a buffer area so that you can bank it up a little bit higher uh, without it just sort of uh, uh, flowing down to the front and dropping your hill. Now, since this is your tank, I'm going to let you actually yeah. do a, do okay, a good yeah. couple and just do a plain flat layer across uh, across all the base. Yeah. You don't have to be too finicky about it and just uh, get it in there. Right now, as I said before, while Mike is doing this, there is definitely some more premium planted substrates like the ADA Amazonia um, and to an extent uh, uh, fluval stratum. Uh, something like this is, is basically a, either a baked clay or a chipped lava rock. Uh, uh, fluoride in this case, case is a baked clay. Uh, again, not premium, doesn't have any uh, existing nutrient base, but if you're doing uh, regular fertilization, you don't necessarily need that when you're first getting into this. Uh, I know some people will tell you to run out and get you know the most expensive stuff because ADA is the best, so you must plant in that. Yes, ADA is the best and you will have great results. However, it's not necessary to break the bank when you're first getting into the planted tank. And since this is one of Mike's first uh, attempts at planted, he's picked a really good sort of mid-grade substrate that he's going to see results with and be able to learn from and work with. How does that look, Kevin? Perfect. Perfect? Yep. All right. right. So now that we have just sort of that, that general base layer, we can start at least putting some of our hardscape materials back in. And now. I always like working from the main focal point first and then going down from there because you're going to sort of that's going to be what you want to design around. Uh, so in this case Mike's got this beautiful uh, piece of root wood here and again from our from our basic uh, sort of yeah, mock-up sure. at the front. Should I move out of the way? Well, there we go. So at least, again, since this is going to be our main focal point, you can see we've got it sitting, the main, the main piece of it, just at the, at the third line and crossing over some of these intersecting points. There's a little bit more advanced stuff that I will show in a future video that we don't really need to get into right now about the angles, but I'll touch briefly on it. Okay, so after the little uh, sort of speed up there, uh, you can see what we did is we added, again, that piece of lava rock as well as another one. Now, these are the main focal points that are going to be used in this, aside from the plants, obviously. Now, with this other little piece here, what we're attempting to do is, even though it's a separate piece, make it look like this could be a continuation of this main root. Now, the way that this is sort of curved, obviously in nature, that means that it, it when it was growing, it reached some sort of uh, resistance and had to go around a rock or go around another piece of root. And so it really helps when you have pieces like that to try and uh, replicate that because then it looks like this is where it belongs, you know, that it has all of that curve naturally. Uh, now we're going to uh, add a little bit more lava rock as well to try and build up these areas so it doesn't look like this is just a stone out of place. And that's something that's really important in trying to achieve sort of a natural look is rarely do you see a single rock by itself just out of context, you know? You want something that is going to make it look like, you know, smaller pieces have fallen off the larger because typically, you know... That's what happens in nature, yeah. Exactly, you know, uh, 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 you'll get your, your hot and your cold, uh, ice builds up in rocks and starts to split them off and everything, and so we have that crumbling in it, and it adds to the aging look about it. If you're, if you're using just single pieces like this, it almost makes it look too young and you're going to rely entirely on the plants to, uh, to age it and to make it look uh, matured. But if you can sort of muck around and, and make it look like something has been there for a while and started to break apart, it really adds that sort of authenticity and age to your tank as it is. Now, I'm going to suggest that we do some of that right now to sort of build that area up before we bank our substrate to get into where our plants are going to go. Uh, just as another quick note, uh, you can see where the join is here. Now those joints you can cover up with moss, which is exactly what we're going to do in other plants because it sort of hides the fact that this wasn't originally part of the same root base. And again, just standing back really quick, this being our focal point, hitting that third, 
you'll notice that again, we've got this section over here hitting this third. So this smaller portion gives weight and strength to that, and it allows the eye to flow naturally down along. And as I pointed out to Mike uh, during one of the breaks, you can actually, if you trace your finger from the bottom up to this third, you can sort of see that flow of that line down there. Here, I've got my trusty marker. I don't know how much of this is going to show up. But it's at least giving you sort of that general line of sight. Yeah. You know, and so again, it's you're you're sort of forcing uh, a symmetry and a balance in an unbalanced situation by following these points and using all of these intersecting points as your guidelines. Yeah. All right, so we got some uh, some lava lock, lava lock, lava rock rinsed. Say that lava, lava rock, rock rinsed. rinsed. There we go. Hey, hey, we got it. <laughs> now, just for those of you who are wondering. This is the stuff I get now. We're Canadian, so we go to Canadian Tire. So that's uh, <laughs> that's that's our, our, our main uh, hardware store here. Uh, this is just a, a Grill Pro. This is the type of lava rock that you can use on your barbecue. Caution, again, I was mentioning to Mike that uh, I've seen some people make some horrible mistakes in the forum where they've gone up and gotten barbecue briquettes. Yeah. And yeah, you don't want to do that. But this is this is just a plain lava rock. You know, it is the same stuff as what's in there, just in smaller bits that's been broken down for use. Uh, if you can't find this at your hardware store, you can find it a lot of times at um, landscaping stores. Okay. Yeah. Because people will use this to line their garden beds and stuff like that as well. Oh, okay. Uh, so it is just straight rock. It does need to be rinsed because it, it is fairly dusty, but I love this stuff. And I've got another video that's going to be coming up on all the, the wonderful uses for this. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But we're going to start putting that in. Because again, it comes in all varying sizes. Now, you can go, you can go a little bit further with it and start smashing it up with a hammer, and we'll decide uh, as we're going. But because we've already got the fluoride in here that is the same color as that, we might not need to do that. Uh, the reason to, being is that if you're say working with just uh, some decorative sand, you know, instead of fluoride or something that's not this color. You want to, to range from boulder size down to rock size down to gravel size, yeah. right? Now, like I said, in this case, we're not going to have to do that. So, I like taking it and, where at all possible, starting off by literally sort of dropping it down close to it and letting it kind of fall like a little bit naturally on its own. Now, this is very light. You're going to hear a little clink and clunk, but don't worry, you're not going to break your glass. And sometimes you do have to kind of just sort of place it around. Want to look like a natural rock pile, right? Well, that's so, it. Yeah. yeah, let things sort of fall as they may a little bit here and there, and then move back and uh, you get to play God a little bit in that case because then you, you take the, the the chance and fate out of it and adjust it how you want it to be. Now, again, in this case, my first handful brought up a lot of uh, sort of bigger pieces there. But so uh, I'm gonna go digging and find a couple uh, a couple smaller looking pieces that we can kind of drop into the same little technique with. Yeah. And it really does help blend in those other two rocks. It really does look like it actually fell off of this piece, right? Exactly. Yeah, because yeah. you can imagine that this piece sort of it would have been it broke, shattered. And, yeah. And uh, different times too, if you're working with a really deep substrate, you can use these little, little cracks in between to make it look like a bit of a rock slide has happened, right? Yeah. Where some of the smaller pieces have really sort of flown through, flown through there. And again, it's just about trying to sort of continue. Now you don't want. When you're working with a larger piece like that, you don't want these smaller pieces to then overwhelm and take away from it, but just, again, to accent it, because the smaller pieces will give some strength to the larger. And the nice thing about Lava Rock too is that it can um, allow for you to build your substrate up on top of that without having to waste it. So instead of pouring bucket after bucket of really expensive substrate, You've got something that's going to create a base, and because this is nice and light, you know, you're not really adding a ton of weight to your tank. Yeah. 
right? Instead of going in and getting like a like a heavier river rocks, rocks or something. Yeah. Exactly. Now there's many ways you can do it, but this is one of my favorite ways, especially because these lava rocks being so porous, they're a great home for beneficial bacteria in your substrate and in your water. Yeah. So exactly. it's and it allows the water to move a little bit uh, uh, freely through it as well, even once it is covered by substrate, mm -hmm. which will avoid any anaerobic uh, pocket buildup. So now that we've sort of at least worked around with that area, and some of this is going to get recovered by some of the substrate, I'll toss one or two little pieces over there because, again, I'll try to fill this uh, space in between the two connections, right? Exactly, and you want, you want to make it look like as we said, that this is all existing in one sort of area of nature. And again, for the moment, I think that that's, uh, that's looking pretty good. That's good because it, it at least starts to blend some of those pieces together for us. Yeah. And you don't want to overdo it too much uh, in the first stage because it's much easier to sort of add than it is to take away, I find. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and you don't want to, to, to muddy it up. Uh, too much by jumping deep into it because now in this case we're able to take more of that fluorite and again if we start working at filling in a little bit of these gaps and making them blend again like I said it's no longer looking like rocks are just sitting on top it's looking like a little bit of the rubble has sort of fallen. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot more into um, this whole aquascaping thing than I had originally thought when I first started. Yeah. I, I think it took me about five minutes to put my tank together, so. <laughs> well, and that's it. And I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. And it's something that I've, uh, I don't know if I've discussed it in a video yet, but I know I've talked with people on the forums and everything about it. There is a difference between having a planted tank and having an aquascape. Uh, the main difference, I think, is, is, is the, the type of design. Anyone can have a planted tank, and planted tanks can look beautiful, where it's just, you want to have plants in your tank for the benefit of your fish, you know, and, and, and your water. Uh, but in aquascape, you're getting a little bit more into the design of trying to create something that either looks natural or creating uh, almost a diorama effect. Yeah. You know, and again, it depending on what sort of plants you've got, what sort of fish you've got, it definitely helps to highlight uh, them because it, it makes it look like they're in a natural environment. Now, you don't necessarily have to go full biotope. Now, biotope is a type of planted tank that strives to accurately recreate the area that the fish comes from. Okay. Yeah, you know, yeah. and I mean, we've talked about that, that we've got another build potential coming down the yeah. road to do something like that. Uh, again, a little teaser, not going to go too far into it, but, you know, we, we you don't have to be such a stickler with, with all nature aquariums and go, well, you know, this fish doesn't necessarily come around uh, this type of rock or this type of wood. If they'll live with it and if, and if they'll uh, appreciate it in their tank, go for it. It's trying to create something that's aesthetically pleasing for you first mm -hmm. and healthy for your fish uh, at the same time. So now that we've done at least just sort of like that basic, and you can see just that sprinkling of this has really sort of softened up some of those edges and buried it a little bit. And I mean, as we add water, some it's, of this will squish will sink down and it'll kind of look a little bit more natural, like it's settled. Exactly. Yeah. And what I like to do, and we'll see a little bit later once we fill a little bit of water, is I'll just sort of Lightly uh, around it. Exactly, and, and that'll let stuff settle a little yeah. bit more naturally again. Because right now we're working with gravity, and gravity doesn't always uh, kind of do it exactly right. how we want it. Yeah. But you can get really finicky with this, um, and I do at times, uh, but you know, don't overwork it, don't overthink it. You work at something, you walk away from it. Uh, we've had a few breaks in here between because we're taking a, a, taking a step back and going, okay, how are we going to proceed? And we had a bit of a, a conversation beforehand, and that's really yeah. important, right? Yeah, so we have an idea of what we want to do and how we want to go about it. Exactly. So uh, what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to start filling in more of this substrate now for the functionality of it. Okay. Now that we have sort of the, that basic design that we know is going to be uh, existing on this sort of plane, like I said, we're going to want to 
bank up pockets of the substrate yeah. to accommodate some of those stem plants that we're going to be putting in. Okay. Now, uh, with some of the trimmings, uh, we'll go over that in, in a few minutes as we start planting them. But I've talked, like some of them are very tall growing and some of them are fairly short and some of them are versatile in a few little sort of carpets. Now, judging where you're going to put them, as you get more experienced, you'll get to know what a plant looks like when it fills out. Okay. And so that's really something that you'll find helpful as you grow because if you know, hey, this plant has this sort of bushy oh, quality, yeah. this is where I'm going to want to plant it, yeah. right? We're not going to accidentally plant it in the front of the tank. Exactly. It's a mistake that all of us make at the beginning because we don't know the final stage of a plant. So if you don't have those fancy uh, substrate rakes or anything like that, don't worry about it. You can use your hands. You can use uh, like a, a credit card. Uh, you can use uh, a paintbrush to move it around and everything like that. But again, I like just yeah, getting in there and flicking my hands around and seeing you know, what I can do with it to make it look, uh, uh, to make it look even and natural. So are we going to have to put a, a rock on this here to hold this down for now, right? Temporarily? We think so, <laughs> right? This has not been, um, waterlogged like the other wood has. So, uh, we might have to do a, a temporary, um, piece of lateral rock on top of the wood just to actually hold it down. Unfortunately, lava rock isn't really that heavy, so let's hope that it works. Yeah. <laughs> but now we, we can at least in this case maybe try and use this larger piece and potentially cut. So, at least for the moment, that's going to hold things into place uh, while this bogs for him. Hopefully that's enough because some some logs can just... Yes. Right out. Um, so, just a, a question when we mm -hmm. before we start to plant. Um, do we put a little bit of water in it first, or how do we how do we put the plants in? Because I know it's going to take a little while to get the plants where we want. We don't want them to dry out or anything. Yeah. Is there anything we can do in that instance? Two things. Okay. One, the first thing you said is exactly right. When you're planting, no matter what the substrate you're using, if you fill it so that the water level is just just below the top of your substrate, okay. You know that's one. It's allowing the substrate to sort of settle a little bit in because. Okay. You know, these are, yeah. especially larger pieces like this, they need to find uh, a way to sort of settle down and, and yeah. become a bit solid. And with some of these lighter ones, you might end up, even though it's been soaked, you might end up still seeing the odd floating piece. Yeah. Right? And you want to make sure that, that the water is giving a bit of density to that uh, substrate as well, so it will help hold on to those roots. Okay. Because if you're planting in completely dry substrate, as soon as you add the water, there's there could be air pockets and everything like that that you're not figuring out. Okay. And then something like this, I picked this up at the dollar store literally for, I think it was uh, three bucks. Oh, really? Yeah. This is a, a pressure uh, sprayer. And you, you pump it and you spray it. I find it's just easier than using the hand so you don't end up getting a carpal tunnel as you're working on it. <laughs> and that way, as you're working on plants over here that you've planted and then you move on, you want to keep your plants, again, moisturized, right? Okay. So they're not starting to dry out. Some varieties will be okay for the amount of time. Uh, some of them will dry out really fast. A little bit more sensitive. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, always keep a bottle handling like, and like I said, super cheap, you know, fill her up, pump her up, and just give her your spray down. And I find that this is helpful too because it has both a mist and a jet setting on it. Okay. So you can mist your plants, but then you can also I use it to try and clean off a little bit of these rocks sometimes, okay. that are the substrate, yeah. on the jet setting, just to let it sort of brush it around yeah. and then it all is more natural. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I guess I should probably get the, my python out and probably get a little bit of water here, just a tiny bit? Yep. Yeah. All right. Again, like I said, at least to, to just, uh, just below the substrate level, maybe even a little bit higher. Okay. Perfect. 